Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video, it's kind of bittersweet. I will be sharing a project with you for the last installment of the Oh So Inspired collaboration. I hope that you'll stick around, see what we were inspired by this month and see what I'm gonna create. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. I did share in the intro the sad news that at least for now, this will be my last video for the Oh So Inspired collaboration. With COPPA and the possible changes coming in the new year, the team has decided that we're just gonna stop for now, we're gonna go out with a bang, and who knows, maybe in the future we can start this back up again. Not only do I have a wonderful team of women crafters and creators that have joined me on this journey, but I love it. I love going out and being inspired by other creators and other artists on the internet and sharing with you not only what they create, but how they inspired me to be creative. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the kappa's bark is going to be worse than its bite. For our final month, we were inspired by a card created by Dina Cole. I will pop it up on the screen here. What inspired me this month was the kind of messy embossing, that glue gun embossing, and then the background behind it. She did use a hot glue gun, but today I'm gonna to be using something different and kind of getting a similar effect. I will be creating two cards with the products that you see in front of you. If I do add anything later, I will be sure to let you know. But for now, here's what I plan on using. In place of the glue gun glue, I'm gonna try out my Versa marker. This is a watermark ink pen that when you draw with it, you can then add embossing powder and heat emboss. So I got out some silver embossing powder to go with that. My stamp set that I'm gonna be using, I will just be using the sentiments from it. This is the Happy Trails stamp set from Paper Tray Ink. I will try to see if I can find a picture of what these stamps look like, and I will try to link the stamp set below if it's still for sale. But I liked a couple of the sentiments in here. I will be using the You Are Special To Me sentiment stamp and a note of thanks. I will be stamping that sentiment in VersaFine Onyx Black. And then I got out some silver sequins to add to the card front, trying to pull in that silver embossing that I'll be doing. For the background, instead of making my own inked or watercolor background, I'm gonna be using a piece of paper from the Park Lane Landscapes paper pad. I will be cutting some sections from this bottom right corner of this piece of paper. And then for some matting and to pull that color in, I got out a piece of Park Lane cardstock. For my card base, I just have a piece of heavyweight white, and then I will also probably use some scraps of white for my sentiment. Let's go ahead and get crafty. While I am cutting and folding my card bases, I wanted to take a second and just remind you that all of the collaborators are linked below, so make sure to go check their videos out when you're done here and see what they've created using this month's inspiration. Once the card bases were ready, I cut two pieces from my blue cardstock that were five and a quarter inches tall by four inches wide. Next, I pulled in a scrap of white cardstock and I cut this into two pieces that were three and three quarter inches wide by five inches tall. Next, I got out the scraps of blue cardstock to cut the mats for my watercolor pattern paper pieces. I cut these four inches tall by two and a half inches wide. 
And lastly, for my cutting, I got out my piece of pattern paper and I cut two pieces from the bottom right that measured three and three quarters inches tall by two and a quarter inches wide. Once all of the cutting was done, I could start putting my cards together just a little bit. The first thing I did was map my piece of white cardstock with the larger blue piece, and then I placed those two pieces flat down onto each of the card bases. Before I can put the rest of the card together, I'm going to need to work on the focal point, so that's what I did next. I got out all of my items for my embossing, and I started each piece by running my embossing buddy over the piece of pattern paper. This way the embossing powder will only stick to where the pen moves. You'll see there that I just kind of did that marker in just a random way on the front of the watercolor piece. And then once that was done, I got out my embossing powder and filled the front of that with powder. Now because I don't have much silver, I did have to kind of put it under the powder every once in a while and redistribute the powder over the image. Once I had a good amount of powder on the front of my focal point, I then got out my heat gun and set that powder. Because I used my tidy tray underneath my piece, I was able to put all of that silver powder back into my container so that I could complete the next piece in just the same way. Now, you can't really tell it on screen, but I did protect my work surface with a clear cutting board from the Dollar Tree. You get these in sets of two for only a dollar, and I like to use this when I do water coloring or other messy crafts. That way I don't get my wood look desktop dirty or stained. Once the powder was all set on these pieces, I then matted each of them with that blue cardstock. Before I can put any more of my card together, I did want to do the stamping because I will be adhering these pieces to the card fronts with foam tape. Because of that, I just put a piece of ATG to just tack down the watercolor piece so I would know where to place my stamp when I stamped it. Because I haven't used these stamps in a while and I wasn't sure how well they would stamp or how juicy my ink was, I did get out my stamp positioner so that I can get really good placement on the sentiments and if I need to, I can do a second stamp in that same exact area. I did get lucky and my stamp sentiments turned out looking great on the first try. One thing that wasn't so great is I got some ink from my fingers onto my card front. I'm not sure if you can even see it there on screen, but all I did was get out my mono sand eraser and I was just able to gently erase those marks away. I think what it does is just takes off the top layer of that paper. So if you want to look into getting one of these, I do have it linked in the description box below. Once I got that little stain taken care of, it was time to get these focal points put onto the card with foam tape. I got out my blue roll of foam tape, which you know I love. This is actually getting down to just a little bit left, but luckily I have a backup here already. I do buy this off Amazon. It comes probably four or five times as much as what you see here in front of you. It's super economical and works great. But because I only tacked the pieces down onto the card front, I was just able to lift that right up, add my foam tape to the back, and then get that adhered back onto the card front, giving that focal point just a little bit of a lift. Once those focal points were all set in place, I got out my silver sequins and started adding those to the card fronts. I placed three glue dots on the front of each card. These are actually leftovers from some Stampin' Up! paper pumpkin kits. And once I had each of those glue dots placed, I used my quick pick tool to pick up six sequins and place those on the card fronts. And here is a close up look at the finished cards. I 
I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made these two clean and simple cards that were inspired by Dina Cole. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure that once you're done here, you go see all of the other collaborators' videos. They are linked below, and I know that you will be super inspired. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.